So you're headed to Universal's Islands of Adventure. Let's talk about the 20 things you must do. Universal's Islands of Adventure is one of the two theme parks at Universal Orlando Resort. This one is the newer theme park and it is themed into several islands of adventure uh, where you walk through and you can see different themed areas. Uh, this is the home of the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsmeade side with Hogwarts and everything. And there are so many things to see and do in this park. So I'm gonna take you through all of the biggest ones to make sure you are not missing out on anything when you have your trip here. The adventure begins, but we actually don't even have to walk into that archway to make it to our first must do. We're gonna step into Universal Studios Islands of Adventure Trading Company because our first must do is to go shopping. Universal has some amazing merchandise. In fact, I tend to like Universal's merchandise a little bit better than Disney's on average. They have some really awesome collections and things. And if you have any sort of connection to any Universal properties like Marvel characters or The Simpsons or Shrek at me, <laughs> then I think you're going to be able to find some really fun stuff. So first things first is definitely go shopping. I love that little tiny Shrek. Oh my gosh. Do I need this? Oh, it's soft. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the Trading Company store is the largest store in either of the Universal Parks. It is my favorite place to peruse the latest Universal merchandise. The store is going to have tons of apparel, souvenirs, uh, things you can use while you're here, like lanyards. This is also going to be a great stop for medicine or sunscreen. The very back of the store is also a huge Harry Potter section. It has a lot of the merchandise you'll find in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter with none of the crowds. And if you are buying a wand, you can buy one up here without the wild crowds that you'll find in the Ollivander's wand shop back in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And they have all the same ones. You can come and take a look at them, talk to a, a team member about them, and uh, see if one of them is the one you want to take home. They even have wand personalization up here as well, so you can do that too. Now you might be tempted to save your shopping for the end of the day, which, fair point, you don't want to carry around all day, but if you are staying at a Universal Orlando Hotel, you can use package delivery and get that merchandise sent to your hotel so you don't have to carry it around. This first land that you walk into is Port of Entry, and though it's not a true must-do, this is one of my favorite lands when it comes to theming. There are lots of elements to take a look at, so look around and check out all of the different ways this land is themed. It's supposed to feel like entering into a more exotic place where adventure abounds. Um, and it does! This is Islands of Adventure, so of course it does. We are heading now into the first themed land of the park. We're passing Starbucks, don't you worry. Emma and I already got Starbucks. Emma is over at Universal Studios filming the must-dos over there. So if you're headed to both parks, make sure to check out her video as well. The layout of this park is pretty simple. It is a big circle around a lake. It makes it a little difficult to cross the park, so I do recommend picking a direction and sticking to it. You can see Hogwarts is directly across to the back of the park, but lots of different lands for us to explore today. Lots of must-dos tucked away in each of them. The first land on your left is going to be Marvel Superhero Island, and this land is a Marvel character's land. Now I know what you're thinking if you're a Disney fan. Doesn't Disney own Marvel? And you're right, they do. But Universal still holds some of the theme park rights to the Marvel characters, which is why you won't see most Marvel characters represented in Disney World, only over in Disneyland. That's because Universal has those rights when you're east of the Mississippi River. Right behind me, you will see our first coaster must do, of which we have a few. Universal is serious about its roller coasters, and the Incredible Hulk coaster is one of the most famous and most popular roller coasters at Universal in Orlando and maybe even in the country. So if you're a roller coaster person, the Incredible Hulk coaster is certainly going to be a must do. This coaster sees you transforming into a Hulk with the experimental serum. It feels amazing to fly along and it is very intense can certainly be scary if you're not into roller coasters. I definitely, definitely recommend this one if you are though. The best part is when you first shoot out of the lift hill. Uh, it's very dramatic. There's a ton of really intense music. And then when you shift out, you hear the Hulk roar. And that's supposed to be you hulking out. If you do want to ride this coaster, you want to be aware that you won't be able to take any items on this one. They do make you go through a metal detector to make sure you don't have anything in your pockets, but there are complimentary lockers for your use while you ride. Uh, it's a pretty popular attraction, even on a relatively slow day. It's got a 35 minute wait right now, and that will probably get higher, even if you're not a coaster kid. Not all of us are. Then uh, you can come over here and still take a pretty cool picture with the Hulk. 
our next must do is one that you might not be thinking about when you come to Universal, but it is to meet Marvel characters. I'm walking right now behind Rogue and Storm, who are so cool. Um, they're headed in right now, but they do have Marvel character meet and greets throughout the day here in Marvel Superhero Island. I love meeting Marvel characters here. The meet and greets are always so much fun. And there's typically not the longest line. Some of the most popular meet and greets include Spider-Man and Captain America. Captain America is my favorite meet and greet here. He's very cool. But they have villains too. You can meet Doctor Doom. Um, just definitely look around. If you've got a kid who's into comics or even into the Disney Marvel movies, you can meet your favorite characters here. Another must-do ride in Marvel Superhero Island is The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. This is one of the most popular rides in Universal overall. It is a really cool dark ride system that combines 3D screens and physical effects while you ride along in a car that sort of jostles you. It is very, very realistic. It feels like you really are cruising along, working for J. Jonah Jameson, helping to get the scoop on the supervillains attacking, and getting saved by Spider-Man. Slash helping to save the day? I don't know, you tell me. One of the most fun things about this ride is the queue, which makes it feel like you really are walking through a comic book. It's all drawn and everything. It's super cool. So absolutely love this ride. And it was way ahead of this time. This ride has been around for decades. And it was amazing when it opened. It's still amazing to this day. People love it. Okay, it started raining. Uh, there is a tornado warning. So hopefully it doesn't get too crazy, but it might. We are now in Toon Magoon. This is the Sunday Comics cartoon themed section of Universal Islands of Adventure. It's a little outdated. You might not recognize all the characters still if you're on the younger side, but it is a super cute area. And this area has one very big must do when you're at Universal, and that is to get soaked. And I don't mean by the rain. That is not preferable, which is why I'm in a poncho. You need to get soaked with one of the two water rides that are in this section, maybe both. If you like water rides, you are going to want to try these. These are some of my favorite water rides at any park in Orlando, particularly Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. Cully River Rapids is famously my least favorite ride uh, at Disney World. Popeye and Bluto is one of my favorites here. It's an amazingly themed ride. The rapids are so fun. You get totally soaked. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend this one. It's a basic water raft ride with a lot of theming from Popeye. So you're trying to save olive oil and uh, it's super cute. There's water canyons and big drops and rapids. It's super fun. Um, but I actually also really love the other water ride here. Pro tip, use your sunglasses to hold your poncho hood up. But the other water ride in Toon Lagoon that you have got to check out is Dudley do Rights Rips Off Falls. This is the Splash Mountain equivalent here, um, but it's silly. It makes a little bit of fun of Splash Mountain and Country Bear Jamboree, actually. Uh, but it's based off of Dudley do Right. So you're a Canadian Mountie. I think you're helping Dudley save his gal. You know how it is. Um, you get absolutely ridiculously soaked on this one. Another thing to be really aware of with it is that the ride seating is very difficult to get in and out of. Uh, even for younger folks with more mobility, I have seen people struggle getting in and out of it. It is a true slalom style where your legs are around the person in front of you. So if you have concerns about comfort in a ride vehicle, this is not the ride for you. But you must at least consider getting soaked in Toon Lagoon. All right, we are in a bit of a transitional land here. This land is actually just Skull Island, and there's only one thing here. It is just one attraction, Skull Island Reign of Kong, which is not on our must-do list. It is a cool ride. If you have time for it, you should do it, but I would not wait more than 45 minutes for it. Um, and it often has a wait more than 45 minutes. Today, slow day, rainy, 25 minute wait. That would be worth it. But it's just not an absolute must-do unless you're really, really into King Kong. But Skull Island does help transition us, because there are dinosaurs on Skull Island, as you might know, to Jurassic Park. Uh, this is one of my favorite lands in this park, probably second favorite to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It is a very large land with a lot to see and do, and uh, you're definitely going to want to take a look around. We've got a number of must-dos in this section. Jurassic Park has two definite must-do attractions, one of those being Jurassic Park River Adventure. This attraction is a very cool boat ride, um, part water ride, part dark ride, where you are sort of riding through Jurassic Park. You get to check out all the animals, see all the dinosaurs in their natural habitats. It's very cool, but uh-oh, something goes wrong. The dinosaurs get out. Who could have seen that coming? It's not like we have like six movies telling us that'll happen. 
Uh, so the park security systems do go down, the dinosaurs get out, and things get a little scary. My favorite part of this ride is there's a massive Tyrannosaurus Rex animatronic at the end, and right after that, you drop in a huge water drop. You can stay dry on this ride, you can get soaked, so it's kind of a gamble. There are plenty of places to watch people go down the hill if you don't want to get soaked. Definitely a must do though. Even if you do not want to get wet, this one might be one to consider. Get a poncho, be ready to dry off after. In fact, I maybe have a good idea of how you can dry off, which I'll talk about in a minute. But this ride is just so cool. It's definitely one of the best rides in this park. And even on days I absolutely do not want to get wet, I still sometimes take the gamble because I want to ride the ride so badly. Now our next must do is one for those of us who have kiddos. We are headed up next to Camp Jurassic. Camp Jurassic is a really large interactive play area that is themed to the dinosaurs. It's all centered around this one massive tree and there is a really unique attraction in here that you have to be a certain height to ride, just like a lot of rides, but you also can't be taller than a certain height to ride. So it's pretty much geared just towards kiddos and you can't ride it unless you have a kid in that height range with you. So I have not ridden uh, Pteranodon flyers since I was a kid in that height range, which is a big bummer because look at it. How fun does that look? It's a super fun interactive play area. If you've got kids, you've got to stroll in here. And if you've got kids, you've definitely got to ride Pteranodon flyers. It is my favorite memory from Universal when I came as a kid was riding this. So definitely worth the wait if there's a wait worth doing if you've got the right height for it. And if you're like me, a grown-up who does not have kids that are the right height, then I consider it a must-do to stare at Pteranodon flyers, pine after it, um, and wish that you could ride it. Now, we've talked a lot about the rides and attractions. We've talked a little about shopping. Um, but there's one particular thing about shopping that I just want to note is that a lot of Universal stores have actual signed items from movie stars in them, signed prints from Marvel stars. They had a, you could get a dinosaur tooth and a signed print of Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park for a while. So definitely when you're shopping, take a look at that stuff, even if you're not gonna buy it, because obviously it's a lot of times hundreds or thousands of dollars. Even if you're not gonna buy movie memorabilia like that, taking a look at it can be really cool. It's kind of like a museum. Remember I said something about a nice way to dry off? You might consider Jurassic World Velocicoaster. This is the newest ride in Islands of Adventure. It is a huge roller coaster themed to Jurassic World where they, you know, they heard the calls. People want more dinosaurs, more danger, more thrills. So they built a roller coaster right through the raptor paddock. The theme is very cool throughout the queue and then the coaster is amazing. If you're a roller coaster person, this one is going to be incredibly thrilling. You go up super high, the views of the park are unbelievable, and you go so fast. There are a ton of inversions on this, so if you're scared of going upside down, just to be warned, it goes upside down a ton. And at one point, you dangle upside down directly over the water. Definitely the most thrilling ride at Universal uh, to date, and certainly a must do if you're a thrill seeker. Even if you're not into character meet and greets, there is a must do that you have to do at Universal, and that is going to the raptor encounter. In the Jurassic Park section, there is an actual meet and greet with a Velociraptor. You might see Blue, you might see a different raptor. Um, I think Delta is the other one they have, or Charlie. I don't know, but you might see Blue. Um, sometimes they do a baby raptor as well, but if you go to this raptor encounter, you will be shocked by how lifelike this thing is. Every time I wait in line, I'm like, oh, it's not gonna be that scary. I know that there's like, the Velociraptor's not gonna eat me. And then when I'm talking to the Velociraptor, I'm like, this thing is gonna eat me. The pictures are awesome. Highly recommend you, but if you're not really big into character meet and greets. We have made it to one of my favorite parts of Universal Islands of Adventure, and that is uh, this little end of Jurassic World here. The reason I like it so much is because it still looks like Jurassic Park. You've still got all dinosaur themed stuff. The big gates are right there. But if you look up, Hogwarts is peering through the trees. It's just like a mesh of two of the most mystical lands. I also really like this spot because we have made it to the watering hole. This is a Jurassic Park bar that does have specialty beverages, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, frozen on the rocks, whatever you might want. And uh, that brings us to our next must do. At Universal, you have got to try a specialty beverage. Now they've got alcoholic, they've got non-alcoholic, but specialty beverages really are amazing here at Universal. My favorites, non-alcoholic, gotta be butterbeer. Butterbeer is the specialty beverage in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's like a butterscotch soda, cream soda situation with a foam on top. It is delicious. They have it hot, iced, and frozen, and they even have a vegan option now. So you've got to try Butterbeer, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. And even if you want to just try something a little unique, 
I love butterbeer. It is super sweet, so just be warned. If you want something alcoholic, there are tons of delicious cocktails, but my favorite thing to drink are the specialty beers. Universal has a ton of specialty beers. There are uh, specialty beers available in the Wizarding World. There's actually two new ones, so you can get the Hogshead, the Dragon Scale, the Wizard's Brew, the Daisy Root Draft, and the Dark Forest Ale are all available over there. And Jurassic World has its own specialty beer with that Isla Nublar IPA over here at the watering hole. If you're a beer drinker, you gotta try out some of these specialty beers. I'm always shocked by how delicious they are. And I think it's just fun to be drinking uh, like a craft beer that is unique to the land you're in. But of course, if you want that butter beer, you're in luck because we're close. <laughs> The most popular land in Islands of Adventure, a big draw for a lot of people to come to Universal at all, it is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, there are Wizarding World lands in each park. Uh, here we do have the original. This is Hogsmeade. And of course, what's Hogsmeade close to? Hogwarts Castle, sitting up there on the hill. Um, not a must-do, but you gotta take a picture with Hogwarts Castle. You got it. Little bonus must-do, take a picture with Hogwarts. As you can probably tell from the crowd levels, uh, this is the most popular land in the park. It will be very busy here. Um, and as such, there are a lot of must-dos. I think there's more must-dos in this section than any other. The first, we're gonna stop by this stage to talk about, and that is see a show. Universal has amazing shows. Now, most of them are over at Universal Studios. So if you really love shows and live entertainment, Universal Studios is gonna be the park for you, but there are some really cool shows here. My favorites being in the Wizarding World with the Frog Choir and the Triwizard Tournament. These shows happen right here on this stage, weather permitting, um, and the Frog Choir is a really cool acapella group that sings along with toads, and the Triwizard Tournament is a kind of like a dance performance where you see students from Durmstrang and Bobatons come and do their little entrances like they do in the fourth movie. These shows are super fun. They are super short, so it's easy to grab a beer and pick one up and not use too much of your day, but still get a really nice, really cool experience. And you can't go to Islands of Adventure without going to Hogwarts. Hogwarts is home to one of the attractions. It is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. And this attraction is very fun. It's a very unique ride where you feel like you're flying on a magic bench. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's actually made using car robots. So if this is the seat, you have an arm under you that has you picked up, is moving a lot of track, and can move you around like this. If that makes sense, um, it is an intense ride and one that gives a lot of people motion sickness because it does have some screen elements, some live action elements, and that really unique movement. So it can be motion sickness inducing. The ride itself is very fun, but what is really so, so magical about this one is the queue. The queue for this ride does take you walking through Hogwarts Castle. You walk through the base of the castle, you pass the mirror of Ares Ed, you see the greenhouses, see Dumbledore's office, the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, the Gryffindor common room, you see the sorting hat, you see the talking portraits in the great staircase, you see the fat lady. It's an absolutely amazing queue. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, I would say this might be the number one must do thing to do at Universal. And if you're listening to me and thinking, well, you know, the queue, I have to do, that sounds amazing, but the ride sounds like it'll make me sick, it sounds a little too scary. Well, don't worry, because you don't have to do the ride. As long as you walk through the queue, I think you've taken care of the must-do. And there is a chicken exit, so right at the very front, you can let team members know that you do not want to ride the ride, and they will route you through an exit. So you're able to see the whole queue, all those interesting theming details, without riding the ride, maybe making yourself queasy. Gotta talk about shopping again. Um, so same must do as earlier, but you gotta go shopping in the Wizarding World. Wands, Wizarding Candy, robes of your very own, Wizarding Jokes and Pranks. Um, just taking a look at the merchandise here can be very magical. Also, you have got to do some magic. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. So Universal does have interactive wands. That's what you can see these folks doing here, where you can go up to different windows and cast spells to make effects happen. It's not always windows, but it is always uh, casting spells. You just stand on little medallions, wave your wand around, and you will cast a spell. You can see Emma and I do this in our Everything in Harry Potter World video or our Perfect Day in Harry Potter World video. Whether you're at Islands of Adventure or Universal Studios, you can take part in a wand ceremony where somebody in the group uh, the wand chooses the wizard, and they do magic, and one of Ollivander's wand specialists helped to pick the wand. It's a very cool experience. You go in in a large group, and one person gets chosen. One of the days Emma and I were here, Emma actually did get chosen, and I did cry. It was kind of embarrassing. But you don't have to buy the wand that they pick out for you, but you do have the option to, of course. Wands are rather expensive, so if you've got a kiddo who does 
the ceremony, just be aware that that might be a really big reason that they'll want a wand and it might be really upset them if they don't get one. And if you do have a kiddo or if this is you that wants a wand but doesn't get selected for the wand ceremony, then you've got a couple options. You can buy a character replica wand, which are very cool. I have several of those. Or you can talk to a team member inside of the wand shop and they will help the wand choose the wizard. You don't have to have the whole magical experience for the wand to choose the wizard. They'll ask you a few questions and help pick out the wand for you. That's actually what I did when I was a little kid because I was not chosen for the wand experience when Harry Potter World opened. I was bummed, but then the team member helped my wand choose me and my parents bought me that wand and it was still a really special experience. I remember it. Um, and as a Harry Potter fan, it was just really cool. So if you're willing to buy a wand and you don't get chosen for that wand experience, go ahead and talk to those team members inside the shop and they will they'll help a wand choose you. I'm not gonna call dining in the Wizarding World a must-do outside of Butterbeer uh, because the dining is typically very popular, it has a long line, and though there are some delicious items, it's English food, which isn't really everybody's jam. Um, however, the Three Broomsticks is a restaurant over here. It's really cool, and if you wanna see every single thing on the menu, you can check out our Eating Everything in Harry Potter World video. And then I literally ate everything in both uh, Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. You can see all of that wizarding food and that's on the channel now. But our next must do is gonna be one that's a little bit of a twofer. So our next must do is the Hogshead. And the Hogshead is the bar in Islands of Adventure. When I am in Universal Studios at Diagon Alley, this is the one thing that I think this side maybe beats on. Um, the Hogshead is a really like dark and moody bar. Um, it's connected to the three broomsticks. So it's a great way to see inside without waiting in all that line and doing a full meal. And it's got an interactive Hogshead that does move behind the bar. This is a great spot to grab your butterbeer. Um, you can grab butterbeer at the carts outside, but you can also come in here to do it and get a little bit more theming. And uh, this bar does have those signature Harry Potter World beers. So remember that must do. I have yet to try the Dark Forest Ale, so I think I'm gonna grab it so that we can put a review up on the site and I'll let you know what I think of it. I tried the Daisy Root Draft yesterday and it was pretty tasty. The spot that I've chosen to stand in is making my poncho do weird things. <laughs> I got my poncho pinned down. I could take it off, but if I do that, it's gonna start pouring. You and I both know it. Um, let's try out the Dark Forest Ale. Ooh, tastes like the Forbidden Forest. <laughs> this is certainly a heavier beer. It's not as heavy as something like a Guinness, and it's not the heaviest of the beers. The Wizard's Brew is heavier. Um, it's got a really nice character to it. The main flavor I'm getting is like a molasses-y vibe. Um, obviously not sweet, but it's not hoppy at all. It's smooth and easy to drink on the heavier side, so I think it'll be very filling. Uh, I'm actually a fan of this. Um, I tried the Daisy Root Draft during our perfect day at Universal yesterday. Both of these beers are new, and I think these are awesome. I'm so excited that they've been added. There's an ATM over here. I'm not sure I've ever walked through this little alley. All right, another major must-do. It's Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. This is the most popular attraction at any Universal park. It is a coaster where you ride on Hagrid's Magical Motorbike, formerly Sirius Black's, and it's a story coaster. So there are elements that are just kind of a plain old roller coaster. And then there's also elements where you go into the dark forest and you see Hagrid teaching his care of magical creatures class. Of course, the bikes have a bit of a mind of their own, so things can get a little wonky uh, out there, but it is a total blast. You can ride on the motorbike or the sidecar. Both are fun. The motorbike's a little more fun, um, but it is uh, absolutely must do. It is not a super intense coaster. I'm not a huge coasters girl and I love Hagrid's. It is something that I will rope drop and wait 60 minutes for every single time I'm here for fun and a lot of the time that I'm here for work. So you just gotta, you just gotta ride Hagrid's. If you're okay with a coaster, if you're able to ride it, it is the biggest must do maybe at all in Universal. And even though we're kind of exiting the Wizarding World, we're not quite done because there is one more and it's go to London. Not the real London, although I did just do that with my family for fun and we all wanna go back already because we loved it so much. I'm talking about London in the Wizarding World over in Universal Studios. Now this must do is a little tricky. You do need to buy a two park per day ticket to be able to do this. You have to be able to hop over to Universal Studios to be able to make this happen. Um, but if you do have admission to both theme parks, 
you can ride the Hogwarts Express. This is the famous train from the Harry Potter movies that takes the students to and from Hogwarts, and you can ride it from the Hogsmeade station to the London side. Now, this is not the side that most people prefer because in the books and the movies, they go from London to Hogsmeade, so a lot of people want to ride it the other way. But for me, I really like riding it this way because you get to see more of my favorite characters. You see Malfoy Manor, you see Fred and George. So I really like riding the train this way. There are different experiences, whichever way you go, you'll see some magical sights out the windows. Some things might happen on the train. Um, it is a very, very cool experience, one certainly worth doing. You do have to have that two park per day ticket. I mean, it's smart, you know? They're like, now if you bought a one park per day, there's a beloved attraction you won't get to experience. They really got us with that one, they did. Now we're headed into Lost Continent, which is a little bit like the lost land of this park. There's not a lot going on in here. Um, a lot of it's under construction. And the one attraction that remained, which was Poseidon's Fury, a very interesting show, has closed permanently. So Lost Continent, not really sure what the deal is here or how long it'll stick around. Um, but it certainly does have a few must-dos nonetheless. One of those is going to be the Halloween store. This is All Hallows Eve. Um, it is a Halloween store that's theme does change throughout the year. And this is really awesome because Universal Studios gets the tribute store. It's amazing, it's cool, it's wonderful. Um, and that store theme changes all the time. It has a really elaborate theme. Uh, Islands of Adventure doesn't have anything like this, but the Halloween store is kind of a spooky store all year round. Uh, Universal, of course, kind of has horror on lock with Halloween Horror Nights and the classic Universal monsters. Um, and they even kind of do some spooky stuff around the Mardi Gras season in here. So if you're looking for some spookier merch, you gotta pop in here. Even if you're not looking for some spookier merch, you gotta pop in here. It's pretty darn cool. There's a lot of really fun Universal Monsters merchandise and it's a more elaborately themed store than a lot of the stores you'll see. Plus, it'll probably be different almost every time you visit. All right, continuing on. Um, again, not really a lot going on in this land. A lot of quick service. Uh, some pretty tasty quick service. If you want like kebabs, they have really great ones. Um, a lot of shopping. This is where uh, King Julian comes out and dances from Madagascar. Uh, not a must do, but uh, if you see that, it's really something. But there is actually a really amazing must do just up ahead. This really impressive uh, sort of stone structure up ahead of us is actually a restaurant. This is Mythos Restaurant. And uh, many times this has been awarded the best theme park restaurant in the world. It is a relatively affordable restaurant with really delicious meals. Um, Emma and I did go here. You can check that out in this video on the channel. It was the perfect part of a perfect day at Islands of Adventure. The food is amazing. You might walk right by it and just think, oh, what a cool stone building, but Mythos is a must do. I do recommend reservations as a can book up, but making a reservation a week or two in advance is relatively easy. So if you think you're gonna want a little bit of a break during your Islands of Adventure day, Mythos is the way to do it. Go get yourself some delicious eats. And we've made it to our final island, which is Seuss Landing. Yes, there's a land here themed to the stories of Dr. Seuss. It's a very nostalgic one for me, and uh, also a very fun and whimsical land. Our first must-do in this land is gonna be to get your Seuss on. <laughs> and you can do that however you see fit. Mostly, I would check out the Seuss rides. Now, all of them are pretty fun. My absolute favorite is the Karis Seussel, which is a carousel, but with Dr. Seuss creatures. I love that one because my favorite photo ever taken of my dad is him riding on the very tiny pink elephant on the carousel. My dad is not a small person and he's riding on that little elephant and he looks so big and lengthy. It's so funny and I had that framed in my room for many years so it is my favorite ride just because it reminds me of coming here with my family. But I also really love the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride, which takes you around on a little trolley above the rooftops of this land, showing you all different views of everything. And there's different narration, depending on when you ride. Another way to get your Seuss on is to ride one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. This is a super fun Dumbo style attraction that picks you up and takes you around. But it's got a little bit of a twist because if you listen to the rhyme, you can avoid getting wet. And if you don't, you might get squirted with water. The one that I would maybe skip, but maybe you don't want to skip, it's up to you, is the Cat in the Hat dark ride. It is a dark ride attraction, takes it to the story of the Cat in the Hat, and it is so scary. I don't love that one, but you should probably ride it to see what I'm talking about. Our final must do, and that is green eggs and ham. 
This is my favorite quick service spot in Islands of Adventure. It is, well, it's themed to the Green Eyes and Ham book that I'm pretty sure we probably all know. And it is a loaded tots place. So you can get a, different, a lot of different tots. They've got pizza tots. They've got the carnitas tots, which are really delicious. They've got who hash, which is of course what they eat in the Grinch for Christmas. Um, but that comes in a cute little can that you can keep as a souvenir. My favorite thing to get here though is the green eggs and ham tots, which is kind of surprising because I would think that maybe that wouldn't be my thing because I'm not big on eggs especially eggs with food coloring, but the green eggs and ham tots are not colored with food coloring. They're colored naturally, and it's green eggs, diced ham, this delicious white cheese sauce all over tater tots. It's my favorite meal to eat at Universal, um, and I wish I could do it right now, but that is our final must-do. And with that, we have made it through 20 must-dos here at Universal's Islands of Adventure. Hopefully you can get those all knocked out to make sure you have the best time when you're here. If you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And now go watch our perfect day at Universal's Islands of Adventure. I'll see you there.